Hello, everybody, and welcome to part three of my jewelry haul. I'm buying out a uh, little by little a lady's jewelry collection that she no longer wants. She owned a jewelry store, so I'm getting a lot of antique and vintage pieces that I really, really hope you're going to enjoy. Please hit the subscribe button, and thank you so much for coming. So let's start off with this really stunning brooch by Warner. One thing to be aware of, and it might be a sign that it's a better piece, is when all these little stones are not glued in their prong set, which these are. And I love these marquee stones right here. They're also called navettes. And of course these faux pearls, which I think you really need for contrast. Beautiful dome shape. We'll take a look at the signature here. Is it upside down? Of course it's upside down. It's always 50-50 and I usually get it wrong. There's a signature. So Joseph Warner had a jewelry company from the mid 50s to the early 70s. It's not really a common one. It's not one you see all the time, uh, but this is just really beautiful. And you can see he was really concerned with the quality of the stones he put in. Again, the construction with the prongs. Isn't that so beautiful? I love this. Now I have a very, very famous piece by Joseph Warner that's not easy to find and I did show it recently in my flower brooch jewelry collection, not my flower power one, but I did uh, just one on flower jewelry. But I'm gonna show that to you again. If you've seen it before, I think that you're not gonna mind looking at it again because it's really spectacular. Check it out. So there it is. You can see it's very 3D and it's very lovely. Um, I did, I do actually have that stone. I meant to glue it in. I forgot. I know it's in the little um, pouch that I keep this in. But this is called a mechanical blooming flower. There's a signature there, Warner, New York. So you can wear it like this. You can, oops, I just want to show you again how nice and tall this is, how nicely made it is. And when you just move this leaf to the side, this flower opens all the way up. And you could wear it half closed if you want, all the way closed, whatever you'd like. But how beautiful is that? So this piece I'm really proud of. I actually found this at a yard sale, believe it or not. You may notice some of the rhinestone accents on the very edges of some of those petals. Let me just do it one more time. So here's a bracelet I got um, and I was a little bit bummed because it's not signed and then I took it out and it is signed, but surprisingly it's not in the inside. It's signed right here, which um, yeah, who knew? So Renoir is known for making copper jewelry. It's a California based company and they ran from the mid forties to the mid sixties. And copper has a couple of things that people really like. One thing is it has a high plasticity. so. Uh, it's easy to work with and additionally copper corrodes slowly so that's just another selling point of copper you may have heard of Renoir Matisse so when you see Renoir Matisse that is the same company but that is a uh, jewelry that also has enamel on it so when it's just Renoir it is just straight copper these are collectible desirable um, this is a very nice piece I think this is just a great bracelet I love these I guess they're not really technically knots but they're they're kind of interesting. This was a pretty cool pickup, I think. So I collect hand jewelry. This is a very, very interesting carved bone hand. This is probably from the 1800s. This is a nice old piece. And it looks like it's possible that this was wearing a ring at some point. You see, there's like a little bit of a groove right there. So um, the reason that I can tell this is bone and not ivory is because of those brown flecks or those dark flecks. So ivory will never have those black flecks like that, but bone does. So this is really interesting. And you can see somebody use this as a necklace, which I will probably do, although I'm kind of afraid to wear it because this is very, very fragile. But I think this is quite an interesting piece and it's definitely antique. So this is also an antique pin. I love this little thing. Look at that beautiful pansy. This is glass on top. This is likely brass, this part around it. And this is like reversed carved and then painted. That's just so beautiful. I love this. We'll take a look at the back. 
Isn't that pretty? I have a similar one to this, but I don't think it's a red pansy like this one. I can't remember what it is, but I'm really happy to have this one for my collection. What a great old item this is. So this ring is very interesting. This is all one piece. This is all stone. It's very, very cold to the touch. And this is called a druzy. Uh, I don't know if anybody has ever seen it all carved in one piece like that. I think this is really beautiful, really interesting. So I picked it out because I thought somebody might like to have this. Really pretty. It's in beautiful condition. How beautiful nature is. I love this. Very, I think this is very pretty. So here's an adorable little cat. I love this. <laughs> Look at him. He's very skinny, that's for sure. He's cute. I love his red eyes and that same marquee or navette shape. Very cool. Not signed. Probably from the 70s or the 60s. Maybe newer. It's sometimes hard to tell with these. It doesn't matter. He's awfully cute. So I'm going to put him with my cat collection. Here's a lovely kind of hot pink thermoset brooch that I love. Fantastic rhinestone accents. This is so pretty. Let's take a look at the back. Not signed by anybody, but I thought this was very nice. This is probably from the 50s or 60s. This is such a lovely item. So bows are a very common motif with jewelry, and this is so beautiful. It's very elaborate, and it is marked, uh, it's 800, so it's 80% silver but I just love this little tassel. I see these sometimes in butterflies that's kind of had the same look to it. This is nice and beautiful. This is very delicate and intricate and it's fantastic, I love it. Here's another bow that's really great. Look at this. So this is celluloid and I can't believe it made it this far in life without breaking. This is very, very old, so it's very brittle. And I love the accent of this red glass stone. I think this is really unusual. So this was a pin at some point and it did break off. See, it was just glued on there. So that will be easy to replace. I don't think that should hurt the value of it at all. But this is really interesting. I wish you could feel how light this is because of course celluloid's very, very light. It's also very, very flammable and it's very breakable. So it's just amazing to me that this guy lived all these years. So. Isn't that pretty? Not a break on it, just in perfect condition. Really unusual. Cool item. Here's an interesting and artistic bunch of grapes. And you can probably tell right away this is real sterling silver. We'll take a look at the mark here. Where are you, Mark? There you are. You are right there. This is sterling right there. Isn't that pretty? So it's a brooch or a pendant. And I think it's really pretty. I like the layering of it. I like when jewelry looks really good from the side too, as well as just from the front. Isn't that so pretty? I love that. That's great. So these grapes are right on the vine. Very interesting piece, very pretty. I do have some other grape jewelry, but I haven't seen anything quite like this. I see a Weiss pin. Let's take a look at our Weiss pin here. So I love Weiss stuff. Weiss was, um, Weiss was started by Albert Weiss and he originally worked for Coro. I think he actually interned for them. So he started his own company. It ran from the 1940s, uh, the early 40s to the early 70s. And Weiss was really known for floral, figural, and also very, very famously for their Christmas jewelry. I know their, um, the Christmas tree pins are very sought after. I have a couple of them. I believe they were actually made in Germany and then they were shipped over and Weiss put their name on it. That's what I think happened. But this is a very pretty rhinestone flower pin that I really love a lot. I almost never find purple jewelry, so I just bought this snowflake pin because it's purple. I love this thing though. That's a really pretty shade of purple. It's not really showing on my camera that much. It's a little better if I put it more in the direct light. Isn't that pretty? Nice layering. Pretty item. Well, here's a pair of fascinating earrings. These really do look antique, but it's a little bit puzzling. 
And I'll tell you why. These are glass, by the way. This is cut glass. These are really nicely constructed. But I believe these clip-on earrings were invented in the early 30s. So it's got to be as new as the early 30s or newer. But these are really heavy. They're really dramatic. I don't know if that's Vaseline glass or not. I can't find my black light flashlight, so I don't know if this if they fluoresce or not. And I'm not sure if these are Vaseline glass. They do look like they're Vaseline glass. Look how beautiful these are. They're very heavy. I would love to see these in candlelight. I think these would really be quite beautiful. There's not a chip on them. I've never seen any earrings like this, so I think that they're very beautiful and also very unusual. I love old stick pins, and this one is beautiful. I don't think it's real gold. Isn't that pretty? This is a nice old piece. This one's definitely antique. Look at that pearl. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to show you my stick pin collection, too, at some point. I will get to it. I have a lot of stick pins that I've bought at thrift stores and garage sales through the years. So I'll be bringing those out at some point soon too because I really want to share those with you. But I'm going to put this right in right in my little girl right now. You want to see her? I'll give you a sneak peek of my little girl. Hold on. So here's my little stick pin flapper girl. She is just a pin cushion, that's all. And she actually has a sister. I have two of them. So whenever I buy a new stick pin, um, I just put these in here. So anyway, I'm going to be doing this at a later date. So we'll put this in here for now. But uh, stay tuned for this because I really do want to show you all my stick pins. I have some beautiful, beautiful stuff. So we'll just put that in there for now and I'll put it back on my shelf. I had a very hard time opening this locket, so I decided to just keep it open so I could show it to you. But this is really nice. Look at that's all hand done. That's etched in like a, a little town, I guess, a little street. So let's take a look at the pictures inside because these are very interesting. Let me see if I can... Okay. So the first thing I just want you to notice, this woman here or this girl, it's hard to tell. But you see when you move the photograph, do you see that? Now it looks like a negative. So I think that's called a dag or a daguerreotype. I believe that's the kind of photograph it is. Oh, she has a necklace on, hey. And then there's this guy. So this is not a dag. I believe this is a tintype because when you push it, when you kind of flip it to the side, it doesn't do that same negative image. So this, I don't know if that's like, believe it or not, could that be a man and his wife? Or do you think he's too, too young? People did get married young or Maybe this was someone's children. I don't know. Here is an exceedingly happy little dog. Look at him. Isn't he cute? Look at his tongue. He's adorable. Not marked. He's awfully cute. I always like buying dogs and cats and animals and figural stuff. I just think that they're fun to have around. He's definitely great. I think I'm going to name him Pete. He kind of looks like a Pete to me. I don't know why. He's adorable. Love that. So this one is a little bit perplexing. So I would just say this is probably check glass and this necklace is probably from the 30s. And it's lovely. And you can see um, the, this is beautiful. And look at the teeth right there. You can see that, that that setting is beautiful. It's a lot of ornate and intricate things. And then when you get to this necklace part, yes, it's a little more golden color than the rest of it, but I've seen that before. That could be correct. But what seems incorrect is this, but it might be correct. It's kind of hard to know. I know a couple of times I've taken things apart because I'm just positive they don't go, and then it turned out later that they actually did. But this is, I think it, I don't know. I think somebody just put this on here. It's not the same color here. And then it's, it's really not the same stone either. It's very different. That is a great stone, actually. Even the back isn't the same. I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, it, it's sort of age appropriate and it's stylistically appropriate, but um, I don't know why they have a flower motif here with leaves and then they have a different kind of motif here. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's take a look at the back of it. Here's what the back of it looks like. And then down here, it's just different. Yeah, maybe somebody just put that on there. It's hard to know. I just love this design on the metal here. 
That's so pretty with the flowers and everything. Very, very lovely old piece. Here's a very weird necklace. I'm guessing that's some sort of turquoise. I'm not sure, I'm not a turquoise person really, but I think this is sort of weird and modernist. And it is marked 925 right there. This is a nice heavy piece of silver. It just came on this box chain. This is also silver, of course. But I thought this was really, I don't know, it's just sort of weird and different. And I liked it. It's pretty, right? Here's kind of an interesting guy. I really like the colors on this one, but what's so sort of striking about this is it's in perfect condition. There's like no loss to the enamel. It's almost like this just came right out of the factory or something. It's in really great shape and I thought it was sort of unusual and interesting and yeah, I like it. This is sort of pretty. Those are leaves. I don't think those are grapes. But that's kind of interesting. It says sterling right there. I don't know if you can see it. Let me try to get it. Oops, I'll try to get it. Yeah, so that's where it says sterling. It needs to be polished a little bit. So um, I do polish pieces just very, very lightly sometimes. And this sort of doesn't really look like sterling, but hmm, I'm going to have to check that. I will definitely double check this. But I think that's kind of a, a, an interesting old piece. So I got these lion head earrings because I thought they were kind of cool. I like these a lot. I don't know how old these are. Huh. It looks like there's supposed to be stones inside of their mouths, right? I don't know. I have like eight of these, so I'm not sure if these are like blanks and they're supposed to be stones. I thought these were pretty fun though. I like these. I actually just put them on before. They actually look really cool. Nice expressive lion faces. Here's a beautiful deco dress clip. It's in really great condition. Look at the gold tone. It's like no wear on it and I don't think it's missing stones. So just notice how these are not prong set. These are just glue set. Still pretty. Some different shaped stones, some different colors. I love the white and this sort of uh, dark red and green. And then some of these are like a reading a yellow, which I don't think you can see on my camera, but this is a beautiful piece. Look at this leaf. This has some fantastic rhinestones. This is really beautiful. I love the way the sides are sort of like picky like this. That interesting? Very nice. Leaf jewelry never goes out of style. It really doesn't. It's just very nice. You can wear it any which way. I love that one. Here's a great old pin. I love this. I like these chains that are hanging so it would have some movement when you wear it. Some nice rhinestones, some beautiful black enameling. This is just stamped, I guess. This is probably just a little piece of brass. I love that one. It's got some nice age to it. Here's an awesome sterling silver fish pin. Look at that great eye. That is likely some sort of turquoise too, I would imagine. So made in Mexico sterling. Yeah, this is a nice old piece. I love this. This is a really cute figural pin. Here's a pretty gold stone pin. So gold stone isn't gold and it's also not stone. It's basically glass with copper flakes, but I think the process to make it is sort of complicated. I don't know, my pea brain can't understand it, but it's, they do something to it. I think they deprive it of oxygen or insert oxygen. It's a whole to do and heating it up and I don't know, it's above my pay grade, all of that. I, but all I know is this is Goldstone and I really do love Goldstone. I think it's very pretty. Isn't that a nice little thing? I got this weird modernist bracelet. This is glass, this is probably from the 70s maybe from the 60s. That sort of walnut brown color was big in that time frame. I just thought it was sort of weird. So one thing you might just notice when you look at it, it's not really nicely constructed or anything like that. I don't know. I just thought it was kind of an oddity. Really different and um, yeah, I don't know. I like it. So here's a curiosity. It's an old mirror, obviously, that somebody would probably keep in their purse. But it's her. 
Look at that crazy flapper girl. Her mother must have been shocked. And her grandmother, you can't cut your hair that short. That is shocking. Look at her. Look at her necklace. What is that sort of fringy thing that she's wearing around? What is that? That's awesome. So she's just great. That is some sort of a, a real a real person right there. I don't think that's a famous person. Isn't that cute? I wonder what the story is to this. I wonder if she had this made for her mother or for her beau. I'm just not sure what this is, but I think it's kind of an interesting artifact of days gone by. I hope, uh, I hope you had a good life. What do you think? She is 17, 18 years old there, something like that. Beautiful. That's really, really a cute item. So I don't know what this thing is. I don't know if it's a pumpkin or I don't know. Are you a parsnip? Are you a rutabaga? Who knows about these things? I have a bunch of food jewelry, but I don't have anything like this. I've never seen anything like this. It's kind of uh, whimsical and, and flowy and nice. I kind of like this. What do you think? Some nice clear rhinestones. It's not signed, no signatures that I saw. I just thought that was kind of unusual. Unusual and weird, which I like. So I got this fantastic pair of troll earrings. How amazing are they? Aren't these cool? See, they're, they're dangle earrings, and these would be really, really fun to wear. Now, interestingly, they must be knockoffs because they're not signed, and I think they would ordinarily be signed if they were um, like an officially licensed product. Look at their bellies. <laughs> I think these are really, really fun. So likely from the 60s or 70s on these. They're adorable. Here's a cute little charm. This is kind of nice and heavy for its size, actually. It's sterling silver. It's marked Denmark. And this is the Little Mermaid, which is based on the Hans Christian Andersen story. And I think this sculpture actually resides in Denmark. I haven't been to see it. I've been to Denmark, but I haven't seen her before. So she is sitting on a rock looking out at the sea. I'm going to be doing a My Jewelry Box show on my charm bracelet collection. I have lots and lots of interesting old charms. I'm going to be getting to that at some point too. Here's a beautiful little brooch that really looks an awful lot like 18 karat gold. I don't think it is. Of course, I'm going to test all these things. But it kind of feels light enough to be. And also, I really... um. I don't know, it just really feels it. I'm sure it isn't. Anyway, this is beautiful. I love that center stone. It's kind of a pinky purple color. And you can see the way the light really, really plays off this. This is just be a, a beautiful item to wear. Here's a little flower. This is not marked. I think I might have a couple other ones like this. I thought that was pretty. Anything with rhinestones like this, I'm usually going to buy it just because I think they're beautiful and I love them. So let's take a look at another rhinestone item. So interestingly, in one of my videos of my favorite finds for 2020, I have put a brooch that's similar to this one. It's not the same, but it's very interesting, I think, to have a three-pointed brooch. This is only the second one I've ever found. So some of the stones are closed back, some are open-backed. Very interesting, I think. It's got a nice dome shape to it. Yeah, this one's really a stunner. Look at those, look at those blues. Isn't that beautiful? It almost looks like a Christmas tree. Beautiful. So I picked out this bracelet because I thought it was very unusual. I love all these charms and I think these beads are glass and they have all these little purses all over them, these purse charms. They seem like they are possibly copper. But I'm not sure on the age on this one. And it has a hang tag right there of R. Hmm. I'm not really convinced this is very old, but I don't know. It's possible that somebody had this old bracelet and then maybe put these charms on. Hmm. Well, one thing that makes me unsure is this enameling. And this enameling is sort of um, swirly. It's like it has like metallic swirls in it. This doesn't seem that old to me. I don't know. What do you think? This one is, oops, keeps going out of focus. I don't know about this one. This is a puzzlement, but I still think it's really cool. It has a lot of movement when you walk, and um, I think it's, I think it's very, very pretty. I just don't know. I don't know what it is. What do you think? Weigh in on it. I'm not sure. 
Just these flat little purse charms. Cool item though. Here's a sweet little pendant. It sure looks like it's sterling. It's not marked though. I have to test this. It might be marked. I have to look at it more carefully. But I thought this was pretty unusual. This is pretty unusual and it's nice and light. I thought at first it opened, but it actually doesn't. It looks like it's going to, doesn't it? But I thought that was kind of, kind of cool. Here's a beautiful Trafari brooch. This one's really interesting. I mean, I like the whole thing. I like the whole vibe of it, the whole feel of it, the whole look of it. This is a great piece. So there's the Trafari signature with the copyright symbol. And there's a crown over the Trafari. So this dates from 55 to 69. Really interesting. All right, so I have one last thing for today. I have these amazing cufflinks. These are very old, very mod, obviously, marked sterling. And these are abalone shells. And I don't know, are those supposed to be frowny faces? How weird are these? Anyway, I can't find any comps and I just think these are really weird and wonderful. So anyhow, thank you so much for coming to part three of my jewelry haul video. I have so many more pieces. I think I have a total of 500 pieces or something like that. So please keep your eyes open and come back for more videos if you want. And also look for my stick pin collection I'm gonna be doing. I'm also gonna be doing a video on hands and oh, there's just so many more things that I have planned. So please hit the subscribe button. It would really help me out a lot. Hit the thumbs up button, leave me a comment and we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much again for coming everybody. Take care.